Hey kids, it's me, Keith, from the Wired Nerdy Podcast, and this is a retro game review, where we hop into the DeLorean, go back in time, and take another look at some of our favorite retro video games. Today, we're going to be looking at Wing Commander for the Super Nintendo. Now, I have a disclaimer. This game has major nostalgia for me because in 1992, when the game was released, I was 12. I broke my foot while playing basketball, and I got to stay home from school for a few days. My dad went to the rental store, do you remember those, and picked up this game because he knew I was dying to play it. We had a copy for PC, which may or may not have been pirated, but we didn't have a computer that could handle it, so I wasn't able to play it. You see, back then, to play it in full 256 VGA color and sound, you needed at least a 386 processor and a sound blaster. I'm sure the Smithsonian has one of those on display. Anyway, here's the review. Now, as I just mentioned, this game was originally on the PC. The game was developed by a man named Chris Roberts at a company called Origin Systems, which is now owned by Electronic Arts. It was ported by a company called Mindscape over to the Super Nintendo. Let's start with the plot. Picture this. It's the 27th century, and humanity is locked in a cosmic cat fight with a feline alien race called the Kilrathi. These cat aliens are grumpy, territorial, and have a penchant for scratching up all the space stations. Enter you, the rookie pilot, with more guts than common sense. Your mission? Well, it's to hop into your trusty spacecraft, dodge asteroids, and blast Kilrathi furballs into cosmic confetti. Okay, space alien cats may be a little odd as a plot point, but let's just go with it. Now let's talk about the graphics. I love the art style, but I'm a sucker for pixelated games that have that cool 16-bit feel. Imagine a Saturday morning cartoon got shoved into a cartridge. That's the vibe. Spaceships look like chunky blocks someone drew on a napkin. But hey, they move. Except when they don't. Because sometimes enemies just freeze. Wing Commander's graphics are like that old family photo album. Nostalgic, a bit fuzzy, and filled with awkward poses. But hey, it's the 90s. We didn't need 4K resolution. We had our imaginations. Upon playing this again on both the PC and the Super Nintendo, I was reminded how horrible the frame rate is. You feel like you're playing the game in slow motion because the 2D sprites constantly jitter. But the fact that they were able to successfully port the thing from PC to the Super Nintendo in 1992 is a major accomplishment, and that should not be overlooked. However, the PC version of the game has a similar feel, and I believe it was a limitation of the game engine at that time. The frame rate flow gets much better later in the series. One thing I have always loved about this game is the art and the ambience that they've created when you're back at your base, which is a large fleet carrier called the Tiger's Claw. There was always this calm feel to it, and being able to talk to your fellow pilots is a great way to fill in the blanks on the world in which the story takes place. So what does the game sound like? Well, the sound effects are your classic pew pew laser fire and boom boom explosions. There's nothing special there. The music, however, gets a huge thumbs up. It's that cheesy, triumphant, orchestral stuff that makes you want to punch through a meteor with your bare fists, just like a good montage should. The soundtrack to the game is excellent, and one of the best versions of this soundtrack is on the Sega CD port, which was upscaled to actual instruments because of the expanded storage. It's definitely worth checking out. Let's talk about gameplay. I already hinted at what it's like when we were talking about the slow frame rates. Flying your ship is like trying to herd cats in zero-g gravity. Turning feels like you're wrestling a greased watermelon, and aiming your lasers is about as precise as throwing darts while blindfolded. But hey, there's a certain charm to the challenge. One thing that does stand out is the ability to give commands to your wingmen. This adds some level of strategy by allowing you to control the approach of the dogfight, and you can decide on whether or not you want to be defensive versus offensive. This comes in handy on capital escort missions, which can be kind of a pain. So what's the final verdict? I will say it was fun to revisit the series after all of these years. Wing Commander on the Super Nintendo is clunky, and that's kind of part of its charm. The game is not perfect, but it's got heart. It's a trip down memory lane for those who grew up with 16-bit graphics and ridiculous difficulty. 
Just don't expect a smooth flight throughout the thing, especially when you come into those asteroid fields. So there you have it. It's worth visiting a bit, but I strongly recommend playing the PC version or even the Sega CD port. Your other option is to just skip ahead later on into the series when the performance engine got better. The story is not super deep, and the game does a great job at catching you up if you miss the earlier installments. If you like this video, you may like our full-blown Wired Nerdy podcast. If you want more of these retro reviews, please like and subscribe and check out our main podcast, which is available on all major platforms. Thanks for watching.